Thanks for joining us here on 9 News Plus. Now, you probably already knew that using your cell phone, it's not good for your stress levels, but there's a new study out that shows that there may be a direct correlation with the amount that you use your cell phone and increased levels or uh, susceptibility to hypertension. And for a bit more about this, we're now joined by 90s medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley. And Dr. Coley, if you could start off by kind of summarizing the study and what we learned from it and the exact linkage between cell phone use and hypertension. Well, this was a very large study based in the United Kingdom, Chris, and it was surprising to me. I use my phone a lot, all week long. And so when I saw the results, they caught me a little bit off guard. And, and it basically followed over 212,000 mostly Caucasian males over many, many years. And it looked to see how much they were using their cell phone, particularly to make and receive calls, and what their risk for developing hypertension or high blood pressure was. And what they found was really what we call a dose-dependent relationship, which means the more that they use their cell phone, the higher the risk of them going on to get hypertension. And it was really amplified in people who may have had a genetic predisposition to develop hypertension. And they saw that as little as 30 minutes of cell phone use a week, which many of us do, oh, making yeah. and receiving calls, can increase your risk about 12% for hypertension. So do, did the study outline where that risk comes from? Is it is it is there something physical within a cell phone that's causing this, or is it uh, the stress that what comes when information comes from the cell phone? Is yeah, that? great question. So causation versus association, mm -hmm. right? And so is this cell phone usage a marker of something else? This study is just following people. So it's, it's an association study. It's not a causation study. We can't say that the cell phone is causing it. All we know is mm -hmm. that cell phone usage, the more you use it, the higher the risk of hypertension. So is it an association or a marker of something else to, to the points you're making? Could it be a marker of sedentary behavior, for example? You're sitting mm. more when you're using your cell phone. Maybe you're not exercising as much. Could it be more stress, more disrupted sleep patterns because you're using your phone late at night, you're not sleeping as well doing some of those things? Could the act of raising the phone to our ears, which actually causes contraction of the muscle, be exacerbating this because it triggers our nervous system to release chemicals? Now, that was a little bit like even people who are on, on speakerphone had some of this higher association. So they think maybe it's not as much the act of holding up the cell phone, but certainly in some people that could exacerbate. Or could it be something with the phone itself, just like you said, which is that there's an electromagnetic field created by your phone. And there's theories that that could affect inflammation, that could cause oxidative stress, that could change the way our blood vessels react. So could all of that be contributing as well? We don't know the answer, we don't know the mechanisms, but all we know is that it's a marker of risk. and. As a doctor, I'm really using it as an opportunity to say, hey, let me talk to my patients, not just about healthy cell phone usage, but also about risk factors for high blood pressure. That's fascinating. We'll get into some of those coming up here in the next couple of minutes. I guess my initial reaction when I read this is, that does that makes sense to me, it, doesn't it? Um, I mean, we all, you know, when I'm on my phone, I'm not necessarily, am I uh, most at peace, right? Right, that's exactly right. And I think that our modern, kind of way of life has really facilitated some of the diseases that can lead to bad things, organ damage, heart disease, stroke. And so we really, these types of studies, I think, draw attention to the fact that we need to be more cognizant because it's very easy to slip down that rabbit hole and just continue to sort of sit in a pattern where you sit at a desk, you use your cell phone, you know, you're at a screen right before you go to bed. You do all these types of behaviors, which we were not evolved to have. And they're, they're facilitating our disease, whether it's through direct mechanisms or indirect, we don't know. But it certainly is a wake-up call, knowing that you know nine out of 10 Americans consume too much sodium, knowing that hypertension is a silent killer hmm. that all of us really need to pay attention to. Well, you mentioned half an hour a week, which seems like a very little amount, but what sorts of, what recommendations do you have? How much should we be on our cell phone per day, per week? Yeah, you know, and I think there's different types of behaviors, but I would say that you want to minimize the amount on your phone. Try to keep it under an hour of all the activities that you're doing. And I know that's a big ask for a lot of people. If you need to do more than that for your work or because of your life or your you know, social circle or what have you, then freak, take frequent breaks and interrupt. And, and the way to do that is not just you know, to get up and walk around because that gets the blood flowing, but also to look in the distance. So taking a walk outside, for example, is a great way and, and, I, and I call it, you know, you can call it media breaks or you can call it tech breaks or whatever you want to call it, digital detox. But it's really every day you need 
to pepper in some time away from the phone, whether that's for your muscles, whether that's for your mental health, whether that's for your eyesight, because looking down at a device all day long can also cause eye strain, change the way our eyes are, change the shape of our eyes, change our vision. So it's the rule of 20. You know, every 20 minutes, you need to take a break for at least 20 seconds where you're looking out 20 feet. Okay. Uh, Dr. Coley, I'm going to be a bit of a smart you-know-what here for a quick second. Let's say, all right, I'm going to reduce my cell phone usage to an hour a day, but how about I'm going to watch, I'm going to binge watch a lot more shows, I'm going to flip <laughs> things over to my laptop and maybe text that way. Does that help or no? No. You're trading one evil for the other there. Okay. I mean, in some ways, of course, the cell phone is smaller and, you know, you're staring at a smaller screen rather than a bigger screen, so that can have some effect on your eyesight and such. But in general, all of our devices, our Alexas, our televisions, our, our iPads, our iPods, our, you know, tablets, computers, they all fall under the same category in terms of the physiologic changes that they're causing to our body. Because they're making us sit at a desk, they're making us not move around, they're making us focus our eyes down on just one thing. And then, as you pointed out earlier, Chris, some of the stuff we're interacting with is creating mental stress as well. Whether that's through social media or through the news or through you know current events or what have you, they trigger adverse stress chemicals in our brain that can really be damaging. And what we're doing by spending time at a computer, a desk, a tablet, is taking away the opportunity cost of all the beneficial things we could be doing when we're exercising, when we're walking, when we're meditating, all the healthy chemicals. So it's almost a double whammy because you're releasing more bad stuff, you're taking away the good stuff, so you're actually amplifying the, the bad effects. You mentioned the two rules, the maybe go for a walk rule, the 20-20 rule every 20 minutes, look out at least 20 feet for 20 seconds. Any other tips to try and reduce the amount of screen time we're spending? You know, I think that it varies from individual to individual, but you really have to try to design your life the way that we were, our bodies were designed. Because it's kind of like if you take your car and you make it, you know, go up a mountain every day, it's probably going to wear out a little bit faster because cars are not designed to do vertical ascents every day, all day. And that's essentially what we're doing when we stress test our bodies with these devices, which are man-made phenomena that's pretty recent in the last 30 years or so, and it's something that's become such a big part of our life. So really going back to basics, going back to nature, whether it's what we eat. So people often ask me, how do I tell if something is processed? I'm like, you ask yourself, is this something I would find in nature? And if the answer is no, then it's highly processed. Like there's no macaroni and cheese trees or pizza trees what? or anything like that out there. <laughs> Similarly with the phone, like if you're finding that your behavior or pattern or things that you're doing are not things that your body is designed to do, which is to walk around, which is to sleep, which is to interact with other people using words, using your voice, not at a computer screen. Touch is a huge part of how we interact with others. Those are things you have to start incorporating back into your life. And I think, honestly, I sort of feel like I've gotten so dependent even on texting that I don't even pick up the phone to call people. But now I want us to take it one step further and actually meet somebody for a walk, meet them for a cup of coffee, meet them for, you know, whatever it is that relaxes you that you can do together, play soccer, the footy niners, or what have you. But community is a big part of what keeps us happy. And we really need to sort of go back to basics and go back to nature. Uh, fascinating in insight there. Any final things we should know about the linkage between cell phone usage and hypertension? I would say, you know, you can't stop using your cell phone, but if you're somebody who's prone to hypertension or you're just worried, talk to your doctor. One other thing you can start to do is to really limit that sodium in your diet. So even at a young age, in your 20s and 30s, if you start to limit your daily intake of sodium to less than 1,500 milligrams or 1,500 milligrams in a 24-hour period, that would be really beneficial. If you increase your potassium intake, that helps your body to pee out sodium. So for example, if you go out to eat or you have a drink the night before, the next day you detox by doing that. Those types of small measures can do wonders in keeping your blood vessels and such healthy. And then really try to hit that seven to nine hours of sleep every night. Okay, sleep more, less sodium, less screen time, more nature, and find those mac and cheese for us and we'll, we'll be uh, way better it. off, right? All right, Dr. Paul Coley, thanks so much for joining us here on 90s Plus today.